Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It is Loka here, back with yet another educational video. I hope you guys can sense the excitement because I'm literally super excited. Why? Because it's a topic that I love talking about. And you are literally one exam away from qualifying as a CA num. C-A-S-A, C-A-Z-A -A. Yo, you guys are literally there Like, how, how does it feel? Tell me, how do you feel? Like you're literally one exam away Just, just, just one exam So you have to give it your all You have to do whatever it takes to make sure that you pass this exam And your dream is literally one door away Just literally one doorway and i hope you're as excited as i am for you you know because like i said it's worth it you know and yeah so I'm, I'm here to give you guys a little bit of tips of what worked for me for the apc exams and um i hope you guys enjoy the video don't forget to give the video a thumbs up don't forget to share like comment and subscribe and don't forget to let me know um, if you've applied these tips and if it worked for you I like I like positive feedback um, not that I leave off people's opinions but it's just to know that what I'm doing people are actually listening and they're actually getting something from it so yeah um, before we get into this video I just want to encourage you to say that you will make it okay you will make it do everything in your power to write this exam and to believe that you're able because you've come this far you literally went through the first hurdle of, 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 of your undergraduate degree and then you went through CTA you went through ITC and now you're on your way to APC give give your give yourself a round of applause like just clap for yourself you know don't um, don't give people the obligation or the need to clap for you. You need to clap for yourself because you've come this far and you've given it your all. So you deserve it, girl. You deserve it, guy, man, you know, gentleman. You deserve it, okay? So give yourself a round of applause. And yeah, let's get straight into the video. Mm -hmm. uh, so I want to start with general tips, right? That worked for me. Number one, you guys know I'm from Great Fentene. I speak more Afrikaans than I speak English on a daily basis. So the first thing that I did before the pre-release information even came out was trying to improve my vocabulary, trying to look at past question papers, you know, um, past exam papers of APC that people wrote, and, and then trying to, to do it myself, trying to write it myself. But when I write it myself, I mark myself and look at the key terms and words that this um, markers used you know for example if i'm not addressing a ceo if i'm addressing the client you know if i'm addressing my manager how should my tone be what should what words should i use you know that um actually like formal professional words if i'm addressing a friend it's fine i don't have to go in depth and in detail you know as in the words that i'm using but um for a ceo what words am i supposed to use you know for um a client what words am i supposed to use so these are things that i brushed up okay and then i also am trying to find out how do i do a proper industry research so for my industry research how would a proper one look like because usually i just used to go and google the industry and put everything in my file everything that i find about it if it's mining i'm gonna literally google mining in namibia mining in south africa and i'll put everything in my file without even understanding what exactly am i supposed to do with industry research what does industry research um entail you know so one thing i realized is when you do your industry research you need to look at the strength weaknesses opportunities and threats of that company so you do a SWOT analysis then you have uh, the pastel pastel p-e-s-t-e-l so political environment economical environment social environment um technological what type of the technologies in this industry is it more like 
human capital was more like um, machines, you know, like just literally getting an overall understanding of this industry that my company is falling in, you know. And at the same time, I used um, my company. Okay, I'm in Namibia, right? What is happening in Namibia in this specific industry? What is happening in South Africa in this specific industry? What is happening in Zim in this specific industry? You know, and then I used to get an understanding what what is my company good at? You know, um, literally, what type of technology do I think they will have? You know, what type of uh, laws and regulations do I think they need to comply with? You know, if it's a pharmacy, um, what type of act governs pharmacies? What type of standards, specific standards, maybe in accounting that governs my specific um, entity? You know, just like a, a brief overview of this industry you know and they don't assume your audience know so that's one thing i had to tell myself that just because they say that your cfo or your group financial manager is a ca doesn't mean they know everything so you need to give them an in-depth understanding you know of the standards of everything so don't be like okay i know the ca must know is one and is two you know so i'm just going to tell them the basics because that is they're supposed to know their CAs. that's why they say for a reason no in APC, we don't do that. You assume everybody doesn't know unless they tell you that they know this part and exclude that part, then you can assume that they know. Get um, to the five day before you write exams. So on day one, when the pre-release information comes out, what I personally used to do is, um, I used to read, the moment the pre-release information comes out, I print the pre-release I start reading through the pre-release and then I start identifying triggers first I read it once then I read it twice the third time I start identifying triggers and um, by then I already know like what exactly is happening in this entity I know what industry to research I know what this company has what they don't have what the problem is probably probably what you know triggers they've raised you know they've triggered on that um pre-release information and then that's like the first one to two three hours you know and then i meet with my group my first group now there's no limit to how many groups you can be in you don't want to be in too many you also don't want to be in too little so for me i had a maximum of like three and a minimum of like one you know so basically i would suggest that you're in two groups Personally what worked for me. I don't know if it's going to work for you And if you're in one group and they're very serious, then you can stick to that one group Some of us just want like different knowledge because if I'm gonna be in a group with people that I know that we are working in the same um, Audit firm then I want to Diversify myself and also be with somebody from a different audit firm just so I can get to see how they think and how they've been doing things in their audit firm so I was in basically two um, groups so the one we will meet and um, on that specific day after i've done reading and everything then we would start discussing the triggers so we would go to that group uh, three hours after the pre-release information comes out if it comes out at eight then we meet at 11 or 12 o'clock and on that specific uh, meeting day we probably schedule it for like an hour so we just discuss the triggers so we're like on page one one person would discuss this is page one they read the story and they're like these are the triggers that i've identified who else identified something like this or who else identified additional ones that we that maybe i didn't pick up or people in the group didn't pick up you know after that um after we've discussed all the pages we've identified all the triggers then we would divide on who's doing probably page one or who's doing page two or who's doing which trigger because some triggers are like a lot of information so you can give people like page one page one might have five triggers and five triggers might take you know how many hours to research on so each person would get a trigger okay if we're a lot if we're not a lot a maximum of seven people if we're not a lot then we would divide two two triggers per person and then each person a trigger and then you have to look at either the accounting aspect, the auditing aspect, the management aspect, the tax aspect, or the strategy on that specific trigger. Okay? And then after we've given every person like the trigger and the research that they have to do, then the second day we'd come back to discuss our research, what we got on those specific triggers. 
Now, mind you, I'm not saying do not do research on all the triggers. I'm not saying don't get understanding on all the triggers. However, if you want in-depth um, research and understanding and all that, you need to rely on your group. You need to believe in your group. And you don't have time to do research on 20 triggers because the time is just not enough. So when you do it as a group and each person identifies their trigger and you guys share information and, and you share um, exactly what you found on those specific triggers, it helps you to focus mainly on that one trigger and to do a proper research on that one trigger. However, you have read the whole pre-release information. You have read the whole scenario so you know what's going on in the information so now just focus on the trigger that you have to research on however still be open-minded about the other triggers if you are done researching your trigger you can move on and start researching other triggers you know just so that when people are discussing in the group you also have an understanding of what going what's going on in that specific trigger and then the other thing i want to say is if you are doing a specific trigger you need to do a proper research. Don't, just don't Google IFRS 15 for construction companies and then you just pack everything in your file, you know? Because now, okay, this is an accounting trigger. Now you know it's, it's relating to IFRS 15, right? However, you, you get all the knowledge you need to know about IFRS 15, which is in your standard, you know? And then you try and summarize it. How is this standard applicable to my entity? The entity that I'm writing about now. What are the performance obligation? Is, 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 the, is the revenue supposed to be recognized over time or at a point in time for my specific entity? Don't just put in everything about the standard like how we did it in CTA and ITC and just theory dumped everything. This is not theory dump. This is an understanding. This is you explaining to your manager, to your CEO, to your client what exactly is supposed to have happened based on the standard so you need to apply that standard to your specific entity yo guys these dogs don't want me to prosper today like why are they barking <laughs> oh yeah you need to make that um trigger specific to your entity okay if you're doing like uh, you have to do an audit maybe about the revenue process or the inventory process about your entity you need to make it specific what are the products that i'm selling okay what are the products that are sitting in my inventory um how do i audit this inventory based on the information that i've been given or based on my understanding of this specific industry you've audited maybe a retail company before you've audited the manufacturing a company before you audited a, a mining company before what are the specific processes that you have identified in those specific industries that you can apply you know to your pre-release information so you, you have to make your research so easy to understand that when your teammates get that research that they can actually understand that trigger just by reading your research your research will be like okay this is IFRS 15 in a nutshell, okay? There's all the knowledge there. And then you tell them, these are the products that our entity is selling, you know? These are the performance obligations. This is when revenue is supposed to be recognized. Um, these are the parties involved that I'm expecting to be involved in our entity. Um, this is um, what else about revenue. These are the journal entries that I can expect to get, you know, from whatever information they give on the day, you know? So that's like you having already explained everything possible question that they might get in accounting to them in terms of IFRS 15 you know but summarized okay so that's what we're doing now after we discussed all the triggers and they were day two and three that's when we meet and every person discusses their research and then we share that information with each other however you can still have your own where you you don't take exactly what they're writing you you're gonna look at it with a pinch of salt you're gonna like add a, a bit of kapana spice for yourself okay i'm not sure if other countries also know what kapana spice is but you're gonna add a little bit of spice for yourself you're gonna see do i agree with what this person who did this research is saying you know is there anything additional that i want to add to this research okay do i want to understand this research for myself because mind you and on exam day that person won't be there to discuss this with you during the information on the day when you when you're writing the exams you're alone so if you did not understand what that person did research on and you're just gonna copy and paste you won't know what's what's happening in the scenario you know because information might change on the day and on what then what then so you also need to understand every person's research and that's why you have day four 
to do that so the two and three we discuss all those triggers we get an in-depth understanding of every trigger we understand our pre-release information from head to toe and then day four i usually didn't used to meet with any groups day four was technically for me to prepare my file to understand every research myself to to summarize it for myself to to make my file you know um easy to understand so that when on the day i come i just you know know exactly where to go what i'm looking for then i cover all the bases you know um that's basically what day four was for for me you know if there was something that i was still a little bit rusty on then that i'll get clarity from my group you know from both the groups sometimes i'll meet some groups sometimes i won't you know um but yeah like i was very serious if people are not meeting i'm meeting another group so that's why i had to be in two groups i can't be here walking on thin eyes just because i'm having one group that is not ready to meet today no who's available guys me i need to pass guys me i need to to become a ca because it's always been my dream so i'm gonna give it my all so if this group is not meeting then i'm gonna get another group that's meeting you know that's basically what i used to do day one day two and three so day one identifying triggers and you know Day two and three, doing the research, understanding the research, summarizing the research. Day four, preparing my file, um, understanding every trigger. Because now other people did research on the other triggers. So I need to understand these triggers myself. Day five was my day to rest, to breathe, because I'm writing the next day. So I drink lots of water, exercise, listen to music, go to the gym, go swim. You know, that's technically what I do. Then... On the day i look at my file is it ready do i have my id do i have my stationery do i have my food go buy my food you know for the next day because your girl likes eating like guys if i'm hungry i cannot think i need to eat so i used to buy like kfc five six pieces of chicken that i used to eat on that day i know it's possible for somebody that looks like me to eat six pieces of chicken when they're very stressed okay so then i'll buy chicken then i'll buy myself um water coke jelly tots um energy bar powerade all those things i used to go in with because guys it's just me it's just i don't know about you but this girl just likes eating she just likes eating so whatever works for you just do that buy buy what what if you can't eat on the day just buy one thing because you anyways not going to get lunch you have to you're writing eight four hours you have to decide when you're taking lunch so yeah that's what i used to do on day five and also i didn't used to confuse myself by talking to people from my group to see oh did you research this did you hear this other group that identified this guys you're freaking me out what i know now is enough if there's a trigger i did not identify 100 percent is okay i'm not going to stress because the next day i'm writing i need to be calm i need to be peaceful i need to think clearly so you coming with last minute information to me there's nothing i can do i'm writing tomorrow already there's no time if it's maybe eight o'clock in the morning then i can still see if i can read up something on it but if it's like in the evening or in the afternoon it's done i'm supposed to be sleeping and resting and getting eight hours of sleep you know so i'm not going to stress myself about that i'm not going to discuss with other five groups so i can confuse myself i believe in my group i believe we've done our best and i believe that the information we have is enough to make us pass on the day out of the eight triggers i just need four to be competent which is very highly competent i'm gonna give it my best and the other four i'm gonna do what i can do to make it a c or a bc as long as you know i have four c's then i'm fine technically what i used to think and then on the day i would come and arrive and put my food down pack my table neatly ready to type i would make sure that these nails is cut because i need to type fast there's no time to be slaying to be looking good for who and for what i first have to become a ca then i can slay most the time will come but the time is not now the time is not now now it's time to write exams so my nails are short i'm ready to write you know i, I start reading the information on the day with pre-release information at the back of my mind i read it once then i read it twice to see how am i going to rank these questions which one am i going to start with first i'm not going to start with the difficult one it's going to take me 20 hours to do because it's going to waste my time if it's number a or number b i mean letter a or letter b you know no i'm going to start with what i understand best that's going to get me a c so i rate them according to out of the eight triggers which one am i going to start with first if d is the easiest and is on i understand more and this is the one that's going to make me score a competent then i'm going to start with d so d will be first then e then g then f then a then b then you know then i rank rank it like that each time i give it 40 minutes 
and then one one hour to read my information on the day i just read it in one hour the other seven hours 40 minutes per question and then the remaining hour is to touch up and brush up and add information where my, my mind is now fresh and thinking clearly after i'm done with everything that's the remaining hour that i just give myself a grace hour to make sure that i've answered everything like they say in apc if you haven't attempted all the questions it's an automatic fail so you need to have touched every question but out of those four four needs to at least be c or highly competent you know and then the rest you can just give um whatever time you get just give it to that question always be strict with your time as well you cannot be out here giving one hour two hours to one question and then later you only have 20 minutes for the rest like i did with my final exams but i knew that this four were properly answered here i gave depth you know i gave an understanding even i myself was like girl did you write that you know because i was focused you know and that's that, that then i was like it's clear i'm done literally i'll answer the rest 20 minutes each on the rest but at least my information was so properly summarized that i just took some of the information and pa 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 you know and then i was done and one thing i also want to tell you guys is information on the day if it's different don't put your pre-release information there because you got a deep understanding and they didn't ask it now you just want to put what you guys discuss with your group if they come and change and they trigger auditing and now they're changing it to financial you are supposed to be ready with every aspect already. Don't just focus on if they say auditing that you're just going to do auditing. Look at your uh, industry from an auditing, tax, management, strategy, and um, uh, financial aspect all the time. All those five things need to be there. Look at everything. Look at the IT aspect, you know. These are things that are common nowadays. So you need to be ready for any question, you know, and on the day, focus on the information on the day, focus to answer what they're asking for on the day. Okay. And make sure that whatever every question is asking for, you have addressed it because it automatically pushes you to a BC if you didn't address all the questions the finance manager is asking. So the finance manager was like, okay, we're in this um, retail industry. So I was thinking the implication of IS2 on what will the auditors come look at you know on is2 inventory our recognition policy and um maybe the assertions of accuracy and valuation you know so and i was also thinking uh, apart from the auditors how are we supposed to recognize the inventory that we ordered from abroad can you also add um how we can best improve our inventory um system and uh, inventory from being so susceptible to fraud and to theft you know so mind you this by this time already the finance manager asked you three questions what will the auditors look at well, how are we supposed to recognize um inventory that we bought from abroad should it be part of our inventory shouldn't it be at spot rate at what rate you know that's already one number three i was also thinking how do we improve our systems so you need to have, to identify those systems what needs to be in place um is the password who, who needs to have access to this inventory how many people count the inventory how's the inventory listing prepared what, what suppliers do we use to order this inventory you know like just just imagine this is already everything that you are supposed to have answered in that specific trigger now you are just like me yeah, i know the financial part i'll answer the financial part you leave out the auditing and you leave out the um, improvement of the systems that's an automatic bc no matter how deep you go with your financial no matter how much information you give you automatically fall to a bc so you need to make sure that you've addressed every single question in that specific trigger you know and in that specific um paper so always number them if the person says i was thinking number one what are we supposed to do with the systems number two what are we supposed to do? number three so your paper should actually have like if there's six then you make sure that when you're answering you've addressed all six in your answer and that's how you make sure that you can go to a C or a highly competent for those of you who are just too deep, you know. So enjoyed the video. I didn't want the video to be long. I didn't want to do part one, two and three because yo, by the time I come to part two, I'll just be like, guys, I'll record tomorrow. So yeah, I hope this um, helped you with uh, your APC preparation. All the best. And I can't wait for you to post in february next year i passed 
I'm a qualified CA, I'm done with my APC, thank you for the tips, you know, and all the base. I love you guys and see you guys on the flip side. Bye.